start this lecture with a thought process from Lord Buddha, whose image I have shown here, which happens to be a uh, non-ferrous metal. He says that trouble is you think you have time. Today we will be basically discussing about extraction and smelting of zinc in ancient India. And I have chosen this uh, because it is considered to be the, you know, first and ravel in our country in ancient time. And uh, so, you must be knowing that uh, zinc is the 24th most abundant element in earth crust. As a result, zinc is uh, one of the most common metals in use after iron, copper and aluminum. You know, this is the fourth me metal which is being used plentifully. And you might be knowing that, uh, you know, like we use galvanized iron to avoid the rustings on it and basically that is uh, zinc is being coated on that. And zinc uh, is a silvery white lustrous diamagnetic metal and uh, zinc is hard at the same time brittle due to its closely packed hexagonal crystal structure. If you look at the crystal structures I have shown here, this is hexagonal and it is quite packed. As a result, you know, you will get these properties. And uh, zinc is a volatile metal and has a low melting point around 419.5 uh, degrees Celsius. Of course, I, I have written 419 just to make you to remember. And low boiling point around 907 degrees Celsius but gets readily oxidized around uh, 550 degrees Celsius in open air. As a result, you know it is very difficult to smelt as compared to iron, uh, because of fact that the boiling point of the zinc is lower than the temperature at which it could be smelted around 1000 degrees Celsius. And when as soon as it will come in contact. Uh, uh, particularly the zinc vapor with the air, it will get oxidized uh, and therefore, it is very difficult to smelt as compared to the any other metal. So, uh, most of the common zinc ores in India and others also other places also like zinc sulphide, uh, what is being also known as uh, spalerite. Uh, here I have shown a figure that which is a basically ore and is having some structures and uh, where it is you know uh, some zinc will be there. And uh, of course, uh, in this palladite you may find iron also in that, zinc carbonate and zinc oxide. Generally, zinc oxide is not available uh, you know. Uh, plentifully, but however, the zinc uh, sulphide is converted into zinc oxide and then you can get the zinc metal out of it. The ores of lead, zinc, copper, iron and silver often occur together along with the zinc. Therefore, you know it is one has to be very carefully uh, handle this kind of metal. So, uh, if you look at uh, the applications of zinc metal in modern time, it is quite enormous. Let me just uh, give you overall pictures like you know uh, application wise as I told the construction, uh, we use the zinc, ship building industries, household electrical applications, batteries you know like and then production of alloys like brass uh, and then you know other uh, metals being used, galvanizing the to protect the steel as I had told earlier as a chemical additives in uh, rubber and paints and in automobile of course, we use this plentifully. And uh, of course, there are several other application which I have not uh, included here, but uh, zinc is being used very much and it is being produced plentifully. Uh, so, let us look at now the what are the evidence of zinc 
being uh, uh, you know mined and smelted in ancient India. Some of these uh, evidences we will be discussing because of due to paucity of time. And uh, if you look at uh, the evidence being obtained uh, particularly from Ganeshwar Jodhpur cultural complex in North Rajasthan and Ahar culture in Southern Rajasthan and these are uh, basically uh, what you call people obtained from these area around 5000 copper bronze objects. And they have uh, uh, carried out radiocarbon datings and it amounts to be that these products are basically belong to uh, second millennium BC that is uh, being you know checked. And beside this 4th century BC, uh, uh, people got uh, brass vase in Taxila, which happens to be the now Rawalpindi district of uh, Punjab in Pakistan and which contains something around 33.4 percent zinc. And mesolithic site of Beggar in Bilwara district of Rajasthan also yielded a few copper arrowheads and of course, it will be containing some amount of zinc uh, you can call it as a basically brass arrowheads. And in northern India also several circular, rectangular, punch marked and other coins of brass dating between something 200 BC to 4 century AD were found out. If you look at uh, there is a more archaeological evidence of zinc in ancient India, it goes to the Harappan uh, site like Lodal and then Kalibangan another one site in northern Rajasthan. And they found around a half a dozen copper base objects containing zinc around 3.4 percent is um, uh, might be you know this copper will be having this uh, what you call uh, impurities zinc whether they have added or not that is the one question uh, generally comes over. But their timing uh, of manufacturing dates back to something 2200 to 1500 BC. And uh, there is another site uh, where people got uh, what you call uh, two evidences of brass uh, which is uh, from early iron age. Uh, dating back to around 1200 to 600 BC and this site you are very much aware. This is a uh, Antranji Khera site which is uh, near the uh, river Kali Nadi uh, banks a tributary of Ganga in the Itawa district of Uttar Pradesh. Uh, <coughs> So, um, as I told earlier in Taxila large varieties of metal objects made of copper, bronze, brass, iron dating back to 400 uh, BC to the uh, 100 AD were found out. And uh, excavation work carried out by British Museum and MS University of Baroda and Hindustan Zinc Limited at Java, Rajasthan uh, around 1982 provides a very conclusive proof of highly developed extractive metallurgy technology for zinc metal in ancient India. And uh, if you look at uh, they have also concluded that the India should be credited to the to introduce this metal to the world between uh, uh, 600 to 200 BC. Because the, actually they did a very extensive study jointly and then uh, and rubble. As a result you know later on this uh, around 1988 American Society of Metals recognize these sites at Jawahar mines as one of the international historical landmarks for the zinc right because of this research. And I am just showing some of the things what they got uh, during this research that this is the uh, ancient uh, zinc retort distillation. They are saying this is the furnace and these are the some uh, you know uh, kind of things. And uh, we will be discussing uh, more about this dis uh, 
zinc distillation method which is being uh, you know uh, they have found out several of them and these are the retorts which are uh, being uh, you know used for the making a house you know these are the being layer by layer they are using as a bricks in some places they found at that time and this is near udaipur of rajasthan that means a uh, lot of uh, you know production of this uh, zinc might be going on let me tell you another very interesting fact which has been quoted in various literature I have taken that is William Champion established a jinx melting furnace in 1738 AD at Brishel in England and started commercial production around 1743. And according to this day, uh, you know, his furnace was quite similar to the Jawahar example with a downward distillation. And uh, it is interesting that the champion used exactly the same technique of distillation that was used at Jawahar and even used uh, 1.5 percent weight common salt in zinc melting charge as mentioned in this Biswas paper. I have given the references that is the John Day 1973 who is talking about this Bishel uh, Brass a history of industry. And, uh, it might be happen as claimed by the various authors that uh, Britishers had learned this thing from India as they were ruling uh, this place and they might have replicated that uh, you know uh, this thing in their place in 1738 and you know, everything because um, uh, this zinc production was continuing even uh, till uh, Britishers landed in this place or maybe after that. And let us uh, look at location of the zinc deposit in India and these are the places lead and zinc deposits are there. If you look at this is the Java region where the lead mines of course, uh, there and 25 kilometer from that you know these are all places Deri, Amba, Mata and there are several places of course, the other places are there here uh, in other parts of the country. The rock in this region is Aravalli region, right? Aravalli um, uh, mountain range. The rocks in Aravalli range in the southern uh, Jawar uh, are rich in zinc ore in the form of uh, spalarite and galena. These two uh, ores we had discussed earlier with varying quant quantities of pyrites in the form of seated zones and there might be veins and stringers of course, the lenticular bodies kind of things that where the zinc will be there in between. And uh, since these uh, material are quite distinct from each other, it might be possible at that time to separate them manually and uh, that is the reason why zinc mining as smelting uh, you know. Uh, was developed at Jawahar region, this region, right? Uh, that what people are anticipating. And uh, seven distillation furnace of almost square shape. Uh, we'll see its uh, image, like having a dimension, like this is the 69 centimeter and this is 60 centimeter. We discovered this Zawarmela hill region, and these are the uh, Arden retort place where it will be placed and there is a also the perforated uh, these are also some holes are there here in this region where uh, you know uh, being made for the air passage and also the us to be uh, coming down to the furnace. We will be discussing more about it and uh, the production of metallic zinc by distillation process was started at Jawahar for the first time in the world as claimed by uh, various people. Beside coins, several other brass antiquities namely leads, caskets, bangles, finger rings, utensils, icon, chariots, religious objects, utensils have also been uh, you know found from early historic site in Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat. Several uh, brass images of Buddha were discovered from uh, Popna Kala 
of uh, Barnapur district of MP and East Nima district of um, MP belong to uh, Gupta and Bhartaka period something around 500 to 600 CE. Uh, Wen Sang, a Chinese scholar of Buddhism uh, around 629 to 445 CE mentioned about uh, Buddha statue um, in a magnificent Bihara near Nalanda during the reign of Harsavardhana 606 to 647 CE. And this uh, statue is made of brass as it was mentioned in his travel log. A large number of ancient branch belonging to Pala, Sena and Kalinga school of art around something 800 to 1200 um, C uh, contains considerable amount of zinc uh, which were found in the eastern part of ancient India including region of Bihar, Odisha, West Bengal and Bangladesh. And moreover records confirm that even until 1840, the tribal people of Jawar uh, were using the distillation process for production of pure zinc. And that clearly indicates that uh, you know uh, Britishers might have learned this thing from the tribal uh, people of Jawar region about the distillation process of uh, zinc smelting. And uh, this is about of course archaeological evidence, but there are several literary evidence of the zinc in ancient India. One can think of uh, Susu Sanhita and Charaka Sanhita, uh, which have clearly mentioned the use of essence of different minerals and metals such as gold, silver, copper, tin, bronze and brass for preparing the medicines. Of course, we have discussed some of them, but uh, we are now talking about brass which contains zinc. And both these texts mention the brass as a riti or ritika and, uh, and also they refer uh, this, uh, to the puspanjan which was prepared by heating a metal in air and was used for curing eyes and wounds. That means this brass can be done that uh, job. And uh, brass was also frequently mentioned in ancient uh, Sanskrit literature as Riti or Ritika. The word probably derived uh, from the Harita or yellow color because of uh, brass being yellow in color. The term Kamsakuta or uh, Digan Nayaka or Dharmapada of Astataka was interpreted as a brass coin. Beside this writing of Manu, Yagyabalkya and Patanjali of the pre-Christian era also referred to the branch as a Kansya and branch as Ritika. And uh, Kotali Arthasastra also among one of the earliest textual evidence for mining and smelting of metal in ancient India. In the Arthasastra, brass has been mentioned as Arkuta and liquid ore. According to the uh, Govila Griya Sutra, the Vedic students were supposed to dip their hands in vessel made of brass and alloy of copper and zinc. Rasaratnakar by Nagarjuna described the method of production of zinc and if you look at uh, about their dates when it was there is a little controversy, but however um, uh, one can see very clearly in that uh, book that it has described about a cementation process of making zinc. And uh, in this uh, cementation process, the finely divided copper fragments were intimately mixed with the roasted zinc ore and uh, reducing agents such as charcoal and heated up to the temperature uh, around 1000 degrees Celsius in a sealed crucible. And the zinc vapor formed dissolved into the copper fragments yielding a poor quality brass. And uh, unfortunately by this method the zinc percentage uh, can be easily controlled. Uh, but uh, they uh, produce this uh, you know brass in a small quantities uh, because for the medicinal purposes. And object containing more than 28.6 are called real brasses are made by cementation process as well as the distillation technique of zinc production for the first time. 
Beside this, there are several uh, alchemical text uh, has mentioned about the use of brass and zinc, and uh, these texts also mention about different kinds of zinc ores such as Mrittika Sarasa, Guda Rasaka, and uh, Pasar Rasaka. And Rasakalpa and Rasaprakasha Sudhakar of Yasodhara, Rasendra Chudamani of the Somadeva, Rasa Chintamani of Madanta Deva uh, are being you know uh, being um, written around something 10 to 12 centuries AD, explains uh, various types of brass and zinc making by distillation process. And these texts reveal the fact that costi type of furnace were used for smelting and the text also mentioned that furnace consists of two chambers separated by perforated plate and uh, triyanka patana yantra were used for distillation. Uh, if you look at there is a lot of uh, literary evidence for uh, zinc uh, you know um, distillation technique and also the cementation process for making uh, zinc. Let us look at uh, the what is the basic principle being used for uh, smelting the zinc in ancient uh, time and uh, generally it is being produced by the sophisticated distillation process which comprise of mining of zinc ore and smelting of ore and of course the final product. Various archaeological and literary evidence what we have seen uh, just now suggest that both the open cast and underground mining were being practiced by the ancient Indian at various places uh, for obtaining the zinc ore. And uh, this is the diagram which I am showing particularly a distillation process. If you look at this is the container uh, where you can take a liquid and heat it the vapor will be formed and then you will take this vapor out in this tube and you cool with the help of water or air cooling so that it will be condensed back. And this process is basically being used for this uh, zinc productions that means the zinc ore is taken here and then it will be heated with the help of of course the uh, uh, flame produced by due to the burning of wood and of course, um, uh, I mean which is shown here, but in actual situation the charcoal is being used in that retort that it will be the zinc will be vaporized and then it will be passed through this uh, tires or the pipe uh, which will be um, can be condensed by uh, with the help of cooling it and also vapor being air cooled here in this pipe if it is made of metal. So, uh, let us look at that smelting process and production of zinc in ancient India and um, as I had mentioned earlier, there are few metals which are produced by the downdraft reduction distillation technique and zinc is one of them because of its boiling point is very low. And what is being done in this case is that uh, the charge is prepared. Of course, for preparing charge that uh, ore has to be crushed grinded and to the proper size and beneficiation will be uh, taken place. And then you will have to mix these things uh, you know calamine or the zinc ore with the charcoal. And then you will be putting into a crucible and covered it and heat it uh, maybe around 1000 degrees Celsius. As uh, I had told you earlier that uh, zinc sulphide and lead sulphide sometimes they uh, you know together, these sulphide minerals are converted into their oxides, right. And once this oxide zinc oxide is being produced, then you will have to separate it out and then this zinc oxide mixing will be again uh, the charge uh, will be produced, will be prepared um, by mixing uh, this uh, zinc oxide with the charcoal powder, uh, of course the wood charcoal and then salt, borax and then you will have to use the cow dung and water so that it will be binded properly and then you will have to make some uh, kind of a pellets of ball size around 5 to 10 mm. And these pellets are to be sun dried 
and uh, these uh, pellet, uh, ball set pellets are being uh, put into a retorts of length around 20 to 35 centimeter, diameter 8 to 12 centimeter. Of course, is volume, two volumes were being used in ancient time, one is 750 cc, other was a little larger or later more than double that is 2000 cc. And then uh, of course, uh, one it will be placed and then uh, it will be uh, actually put into the smelting furnace which I will be showing detail which is uh, of a truncated pyramid shape and then it will be heated to a little higher temperature. As a result that zinc oxide will be reacting with the CO which is produced by this uh, charcoal. right? and then zinc will be produced and also the carbon dioxide and it will be in the vapor state zinc and then you will have to condense it to get the zinc metal. So, this is the particular vertical section of a zinc reduction distillation furnace uh, which uh, was obtained at uh, Jawar Mal and this uh, if you look at it is basically a truncated pyramid shape uh, and this height is 60 centimeters if you look at this from here to this thing is 60 centimeters. And these are the earthen retorts which are placed in this and this will be uh, the uh, sectional view if you take it will be shown here this perforated thick plate of bricks right and which will be holding these earthen retorts and in this place these are the earthen retort and these are the small holes which uh, will be uh, there to for the air to pass through and uh, as I told that this is a furnace is having 69 centimeter this is basically 69 centimeter and this is your 66 centimeter cross section. And, um, the charge in retorts were heated uh, around as I told 1200 to 1300 degree Celsius for a duration about 3 to 5 hours. And retorts are the length of around 20 to 35 centimeter and diameter of course, 8 to 12 centimeter kind of things. And uh, generally what happened like here the fuel being placed and it will be burnt so that you know heat will be soaked into this region. And then uh, this of course, there is a lower chamber the peg is there which is being uh, uh, what you call support this brick and there is a uh, container which has been displaced little bit and this container is being placed where once this is uh, being melted uh, vapor being produced and then it will be coming out. Let me show you the retard and this retard will be containing a uh, small uh, pellets of spherical size and together and it will be packed in this uh, uh, brinjal safe retort and with a wooden stick in between this wooden stick right this is your wooden stick and which will help to support this thing so that it would not fall due to gravity. But another interesting that once it is heated to the 600 um, or around degrees this will be uh, also having some carbon and giving the reducing agent and some carbon dioxide form and also it will give a create a passage uh, for the vapor to come out and collect in this uh, vessel right lower chamber vessel. And uh, as I told the borax and added salt must have been helped in low temperature sintering of charge and slag that will be and cooling of gas leading to the sudden volume expansion lowering the vapor temperature and the chilling action of air draft in the bottom chamber might have occurred due to this sudden uh, volume expansion kind of things. As a result and this through these uh, passages you know like your um, ass and other things will be coming and also the some air will be moving into that uh, vertical air for the combustion of this fuel which will be in this place. So, this is a beautiful system what they had devised for producing uh, zinc out of the metal. And let me conclude that uh, zinc was no more a rare metal for ancient Indian metallurgist as the oldest evidence of pure zinc comes from India only. Uh, it has been accepted by uh, the researcher 
and the credit for uh, bringing about breakthrough in non ferrous metal extraction first in the world undoubtedly goes to the ancient Indian metallurgist. They devise an indigenous method for downward distillation of zinc vapor to produce pure zinc and various gadgets of zinc on a commercial scale. And uh, from India, the technique of zinc extraction might have spread all over the world through trade and communication also by traveler coming to India from time to time. Of course, this is a very clear evidence uh, which had been uh, discussed earlier that uh, Britisher might have learnt from us uh, what they produce uh, in Brishel. And uh, therefore, it can be concluded without any doubt India is the oldest commercial center of the world for zinc production. And thank you very much for listening this uh, talk and then we will be uh, discussing more about how to make a uh, what to call branch idols out of this metal in the next lecture. Thank you very much.